Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. In today's video I have for you guys a deck profile and report of what I paid at the past regionals in Winnipeg. And I ended up playing what you guys would have assumed I, that I played. And that would be Blue Eyes. Because after all, it's not only a good deck, but it's also a dragon deck. So obviously I'll be playing this in the current format. I considered Melifo's Yang Zing, but I did not like... that I wasn't able to figure out... A solid enough build that could consistently go off. I know there's nine threes listed, but I didn't want to copy that exactly the same. Plus, I didn't have the painful decision needed to play his list the way it was. But so I ended up going with this. It's actually well, the main deck is identical to what Mega Monkey used to get his top. As we were talking with one of Winnipeg's players the night before, and worked out a list. So yeah, more or less, it's the same thing that top except unfortunately I wasn't able to get the top and end up dropping after my fifth round in the mirror match due to basically losing in the worst possible way I'll get to that in a bit though so yeah we'll just give you guys the list first I'll also explain some of the reasonings behind certain card choices but first off you have your alternative and your blue eyes you play three of each so that you can consistently get to them then three galaxy soldier the card is really good at this time as it allows the deck to go beyond its three plays per turn, which is normal summon a tuner, summon alternative, and or special summon via revival card, and then make a synchro. So I guess four plays. So you really have only those options, and if any of those get stopped, you kind of get hose over the turn. Soldier allows you to expand your plays by being able to discard your excess tuner monsters in your hand or your excess blue eyes after you've done a search. In special alternative and allows you to just make more plays by summoning a rank 5 xyz monster such as cyber dragon infinity or constella Pleiades, shark fortress i didn't have shark fortress on hand so i mean not running it but that was all fine then for the tuner monsters or other for the last three of sage sage is good searches out stones and i used his discard effect to summon from deck a lot of times the idea being that this guy is both a searcher and an answer to things such as Anti-Spell Fragrance. If they flip that, you can use your Twin Twisters on the other back row and then just answer Anti-Spell with this guy's discard effect, which is what I did to win one of my games. Then two Dragon Spirit of White. It's okay. Unfortunately, you have to run it at two since you play Desires in the deck. Otherwise, I'd run one. Like Drawing it is not good. Then for other stuff... Three Ancient Stones, one White Stone of Legend, two Maxi, and Effect Mailer. So, I didn't run extra copies of Mailer. They weren't needed. I just ran the one of so I could search it. Then for the spells, three Melody, three Draden, three Returns, three Twin Twister, because I built this deck to go second. We had heard prior to this there were going to be a lot of BA in Cosmo variants, and those decks like to go first and set back row, so I wanted to have answers to the Mojos, the Calls, the Fog Blades, etc, etc. It did what it did, although unfortunately I ended up drawing them most frequently when I was in the Mirror Match or against Water, so rip me. Incidentally, they made me go first, so rip me for that. To Pot of Desires, I'm going to say right now, if you want to play this deck on a competitive level, you have to play Desires. The sooner you get your engine rolling, the more likely you are to win your games, and Desires allows you to get there. It's unfortunate, but that seems to be the kind of format we're heading into, as I alluded to, or rather we talked about on the Regionals Vlog, is that this game isn't so much about the grind and the resources, it's about establishing your tempo fast and Desires gets you there. I'm only running two in this list though because I don't want to draw Desires off of Desires because if I do so then I'm playing with a neg one hand and that's just awful. It's the same reason why I'm running one Dragon Shrine and one Foolish Burial. I have been an advocate of not running two Shrines for the longest time now as opening double Shrine is just awful whereas if you open Shrine Foolish you can actually continue your place. One Silver Scry, it's basically a fourth revival, one upstart, and it's just filler, and then one soul charge because I'm a goddamn sack if I resolve it. Then for the extra deck, I ran two spirit dragons, two azure eyes, one can get cut. One Stardust Spark Dragon, one Black Rose Dragon. I didn't run Crystal Wing Dragon as I felt it was entirely win more at this time to try and go for it. In the future, when 
field spells become more prevalent in the format again. I'd run anything. I would run Ancient Fairy Dragon and, and Crystal Link, but for now, I just didn't need it. Besides, I wanted the extra slots in my extra deck for Xyz monsters of certain use, such as number 62, because I wanted to have more than just Cypher Dragon in order to go into Dark Matter. I wanted to take something with Cypher Dragon, go into Dark Matter, or, or rather, I wanted to save Cypher my Dragon so that I could take something later on and just make full armor off of it. So I would sometimes just go straight into 62, then to Dark Matter Dragon if I needed a Dark Matter Dump. And full armor, and Dark Matter Dragon. Play, uh, whoops. Harbinger. I'll say, this, in my opinion, is one of the best cards in the extra deck that nobody really acknowledges as being able to talk or top deck things that your opponent doesn't want to see. It's really detrimental to them. Like, I literally won a game because my opponent had one back row. It did nothing the entire match, and he had one card in hand. So I just put it on top of the deck, and he was done. Because it ended up being a dead Twin Twister because he was expecting Decrees to be brought in against his Yobu Boo deck. One Cyber Dragon Nova, one Cyber Dragon Infinity, and then one Pleiades. Because there are times where going into Infinity is not correct. Instead, Pleiades is the better play. I realized this when I was playing round one as I put all of my eggs into making an infinity and more or less lost once he baited it, whereas Pleiades is a lot more difficult for PK Fire to deal with as you could just bounce a Dante and they have to go out of the way to make another one if they've been using special summon effects from hand and that if making if I made Pleiades I might have actually won that first game against him. So that's it for the main and extra deck. I don't know what I will replace the Azure Eyes with, but it's going to be with something. Maybe it'll be with um, Lancelot, as he's more, yeah, as he's more or less a 2,000 attack Nightmare Shark, which is relevant for the mirror match at times if your opponent's Soul Charge. There's also a Giant Grinder, but I've noticed you don't really see multiple Xyz monsters on board in the mirror, so you're not going to get that juicy 4K burn. So I don't think it comes up that often enough. For the side deck, I ran Regeki and two Dark Holes to out Floodgate Monsters. Gamasiel to out Floodgate Monsters. Ghost Ogre for a lot of matchups, actually. That's like, this thing's actually really good. Like, Mega Monkey alluded to it in his deck profile and in the uh, Banlist discussion, but this is one of the strongest hand traps in the format. It hits a lot of things. Most importantly, it's one of your few ways of answering Mermails, which is a terrible matchup. Like, you could do just about anything going first. They will kill you regardless. They, they don't care if you have a Spirit Dragon out. They're just going to beat the hell out of you. Because if you max C, they aren't, what, they, what are they going to do? They're just going to kill you regardless. This thing on your hand allows you to actually shut them down by killing the Megalo when it hits the board and uses its search effect or its double attack effect. You could hit a Mulan Glacia. Granted, they'll still combo regardless. You can hit a Neptimus, not really optimal, but you can also hit the Norden when it hits the board so that it fizzles out it's just a really strong card in that matchup and yeah like just bring it in against mermail and you'll have a much better chance against them and you can just hit some other various rogue shit like i played against yo senju i didn't draw this in time to kill his lose on turns but it didn't matter as i already had a beat i've developed a reputation of being called the yo senju slayer because i play against that deck all the freaking time and i still managed to eke out a win somehow Baylor. And Crow for my other hand traps. Crow was also what helped me win my Mermail matchup, as I literally drew Valor, Maxi, and Ghost Ogre against him, and I maxied his Diva. This was after I Ghost Ogre his Crow. No, wow, I'm getting no, no. Hang on a second. Yeah, I maxied his Diva. I DD Crowed his Dragoons that he sent off Neptibus, so that ended up fizzing out. And then I Ghost Ogre his Megalo, and he was done. Like, granted, that's a little bit of God handing on my part, but given my uh, luck, uh, my history with RNG, it had to, I had to get at least one good hand throughout the day. Three Cockermated Dragos in case I'm forced to go first. Once Fabled Safe Kate sit for Floodgate decks and in, against Evil Swarm because some guys got it in their head that, oh, I'm going to play Evil Swarm in the three seasons, I'm going to cheese some people out of tops, and no, that didn't happen. The, one Evil Swarm player had to play against my friend's Cosmo deck, but I don't remember how that went, but like, yeah, you could play Evil Swarm around the regionals and get some wins off of Blue Eyes, or you could just get completely blown the frig out by PK Fire, because that was also quite plentiful in attendance. But anyway, I did not want to lose to Ophion.deck, so I sided in Kate Sith and to Xyz Encore without it, and Encore has some potential applications in the mirror match. You could bounce a Titanic Galaxy, or 
a cipher dragon like there are better things to bring into the mirror so that's the deck itself and yeah so i've explained a good portion of to why i ran the certain cards that it did I didn't, I was initially going to be running 42 cards and 3 Pot of Desires, but I just, that wasn't really necessary. This was fine. Unfortunately, I did brick in a couple instances. Like, I just drew unplayable hands either because they were straight up unplayable, they were a card short of being playable, or they were just unplayable for the situation, i.e. I drew too many back row removal cards against non-back row decks. I also, actually, we'll get into that bit, so... So I guess now I can just talk about the tournament itself. So round one, I played against PK Fire, and I drew a hand that allowed me to go Cyber Dragon Infinity in Titanic Galaxy, but he was able to answer it by having just enough cards in hand to negate the Infinity with an Alec, and then make F0 take my Titanic Galaxy, and then beat over my Infinity, and then I'm just drawing cards that doesn't allow me to stop answer the F0, and I'm losing to my own monster, like... Wow, that card is obnoxious. So I lose that one. Game two, I make him go first. He goes, Tour Guide, I max C, so he makes Dante, set four pass. During my standby phase, he flips up Anti-Spell Fragrance. I have the Twin Twister in hand, but I also have Ancient Stone and Sage. I'm like, Twin Twister, the other two back row, and they end up being Advantages, Emptiness, and a Fog Blade, which is, I'm like, yes, because I'm able to summon my stone, I discard Sage, he has no response. I summon Dragon Spirit of White. I blow away the Ancient Spell Fragrance, and then I just go off and make a Dark Matter Dragon along. I mean, I, I take his Dante with Cypher Dragon. He has a Tour Guide underneath it, so I don't have to worry about detaching it and doing stuff. So I leave him with one card in hand going to his turn against two 4K Dragons, and he's like, okay, we're done. Then Game 3 happens, and this is where well, I think maybe the first sign of bad things are going to happen. Also, I end up opening a secret. I pulled a secret rear off my own entry packs which apparently is bad luck you're supposed to pull jank otherwise you won't get your top so yeah i pulled a nirvana high paladin and i'm like rip and what happens in this game is i'm going through stuff he goes first he has an okay hand mine's not particularly great either i have a shrine play but as i'm looking through my deck for my white stone of legend i realize it's not in there i need to do a quick count of my deck and i'm at 39 cards legitimately i'm like uh oh Crap, I have been inadvertently cheating all this time. And some people would say, don't say anything, just play out the match and then just p replace the missing card. But I'm like, ah, that's... Basically, I n let my opponent know that I've been che inadvertently cheating the entire time. And I just conceded the game just flat out. Like, I didn't even bother playing it. I was like, well, I, I guess I lose because it's like, I'm, yeah, like... I don't really know how else to say it other than the fact that, like, I've been known to more or less just throw a game if I've been inadvertently cheating, like, if it's an irreparable game state or just doing something, like, I even do, I did this a couple times in Vanguard, too, where, like, I make grievous, I've been making a grievous misplay that affects the outcome of the match, and I just say, I'm sorry, here's the win, so, that happens, and after I get the white stone back into my deck and get the, the head judge or not the head judge, but like I get the judges to verify. I'm on my merry little way. I learned later words that the what probably should have happened was I would have been told to play the rest of the event without the White Stone of Legend and with a card in my side deck in the main, but that's not the case. And I'm definitely grateful for that because White Stone was kind of needed for this deck. So I'm already down one loss, and if I lose any more, I'm out of the tournament. So I'm like, crap, I have to win out from here. Next round, I'm up against the mirror match, and... I open with a pretty AIDS hand going game one. He also wins the die roll and makes me go first. I'm like, uh, so I'm pretty sure it's like someone alternative and pass. Like, he beats me. Game two, I make him go first and he doesn't do anything. My hand's pretty poor though, as I'm forced to just pass. Like, no monsters. And he starts, he summons alternative and beats me in the face. I'm like, draw. And nothing's, like, I've got nothing. Like, I've got uh, revival spells. But nothing to revive them with. Big guys, but nothing to discard them with. I've got a DD Crow. I've got an Ancient Stone. But I've got nothing. No, I don't even have an Ancient Stone. I've got literally nothing going on. So out of desperation, I summon my DD Crow. And I use Sage to send it off. And summon my own Spirit Dragon. He tries to warning it. To which I tell him, I'm sorry, but you would have had... To... That's not how warning works. He was thinking of Strike. And he doesn't try and take that back, which is great. Because, like, this is a Regionals. 
Normally, if it was like a locals, I'd say, okay, yeah, I'll let you take that back and warning my stage effect, but not at a regionals. Like, you have to know what, if you come to a regionals, you, you have to know what your shit does. So, he lets us go through, I banish his warning with my Dragon Spirit of White, I tribute the Dragon Spirit of White to summon Blue Eyes White Dragon, which then lets me use Return of the Dragon Lords, I bring that back, and then I go into Dark Matter, and I just push him in, and I get rolling. So, that's that, I beat him. Game three, he makes me go first, and I open with Quackenbury Drago, which he did not know about at all, as he tried to summon, first off, he tried to summon Alternative White Dragon by revealing Dragon Spirit of White in his hand. I'm like, no, that is not how Alternative works. If that was the case, I would not be running OG Blue Eyes at all. I'd just be running three Dragon Spirits of White and three Alternatives, but, no, wait, no, I couldn't do that, because Melody of White Dragon wouldn't work, but in any case, so, like, he can't do anything. I beat face for like a little bit. He eventually drops it off of the kaiju. He was going to wing blast it, but he couldn't wait any longer. He tries to do stuff. I'm still alive, and I would already accrued a fair amount of cards in hand, so regardless of what he did, I was able to break it and beat him. Next round, I'm up against Heralic Beasts, and aside from the one Xyz monster that would nuke my multiple blue eyes white dragons if I put alternative and white dragon into play, I, there wasn't really much to fear, like, the matchup should be easy as long as you don't brick, which is what happened in game two, I lost because I drew an unplayable hand, I'm like, ugh, so, I win game one, I win, I lose game two, game three, I was just the sound trance uh, thrashing, I'm pretty certain I just got everything going, so, that was a quick 2-1, then the next round, I'm up against Mermail, to which I knew I was, I think, I think I was, yeah, I'm pretty certain I knew the guy was playing Mermel from just seeing him prior to that. So I make him go first because it was the, I won that die roll. This was the only die roll I won all day and I made him go first. And he ends up setting a monster and passing, which I'm fine with as I happen to draw a decent in his hand that allows me to do stuff. I establish somewhat of a board. I'm pretty certain I make Pleiades in this game, which is what helped me do stuff. He summons Pike discards, I contemplate if I'm going to, well, he summons Pike and I have Valor in hand. I contemplate if I'm going to Valor or not, and he discards Marksman. I'm like, yes, I'm Valoring that, because I don't want you to get a gunned. So, he ends up making a Hope Woven Spider Shark, and I bounce it. And it just, I slowly go from there. Like, if Mermail isn't able to go off in its first couple of turns of play, you will eventually beat them, as they don't, their deck is not built for the long game, and my deck was able to, although, unfortunately, this is where I was starting to see all my Twin Twisters. Then, game two, he makes me go first, and as I alluded to, I kind of drew really well against him. I had Maxi, Valor, DD Crow, and Ghost Ogre, so he couldn't do jack all. And, yeah, it was a 2-0, my only 2-0 of the day. And then in the next round, I ended up playing against the mirror. I lose the die. I, what I eventually find out was the mirror. I lose the die roll. He makes me go first. I'm like, okay. Then that means I'm playing against Mermail or the mirror. And I go for Galaxy's uh, Sage and Galaxy Soldier. He maxes. Now at this point, I'm think, debating if I should continue or not. I'm, and I make the mistake of continuing, at least making a Pleiades and ending with an ancient. Uh, Spirit of White, I don't know, Blue Eyes White Dragon, because I thought maybe I was playing against Mermail, and I didn't want to leave a Sage on the board with no attack for a Marksman, but in retrospect, he would have killed me regardless if he was playing Mermail. I should have just stopped. I didn't, and that's what ultimately got me game one, as I ended up being the mirror, and he had like nine cards in hand going to his turn. There was just no way I was going to win, as he got everything rolling. He had discard outlets, revival spells, he saw Melody, like, and eventually a soul charge for good measure, like, there was no way I was winning that one. So, game two happens, I make him go first, and turns out he's playing a back row variant of the game, which makes me go, what the fuck, because why would you, why would you run back row and he go second deck? Like, if you're playing a go second deck, you should be playing at most Twin Twisters, but no, this guy has strikes, emptiness, warnings so yeah i was having to play against back row blue eyes and unfortunately he saw all of his back row like my hand was such that i had to 
And I couldn't really do anything for the first while. Like, I was like, summon alternative? Get striked. Summon second alternative? Get striked. Use Revival Spell? DD Crow. Use Spear... Uh, Authorize Effect? DD Crow. I'm like, I mean, I guess you can have everything in the world and I can have nothing. And he eventually kills me with after I have to take a two alternative swing pass, and then he summons a second alternative and kills me. I'm like, I mean, I guess, like, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh. So my tournament is done. I end up dropping after that. I watch the other games play out, and we all know how it went. Uh, Mega Monkey got third place playing this list, and uh, our friend Jordan got first place playing Mermails. I vaguely remember what the list looked like, so I might try it on Death Row and show it to you guys. It was a really sweet looking list. It ran Aqua Spirits. It it wasn't gimmicky, it was just a, a consistent Mermel deck, and it was very good at what it did. Uh, other decks that topped were PK Fire. I don't know if Cosmos topped. I know a Counter Fairy deck topped, which made me sad. Uh, no Monarch decks were present at all, and this was a this was our largest regionals too. This was 97, which is for the West, for the Prairies, pretty friggin' large. So no Monarch decks among almost 100 people, which made me happy. Unfortunately, there were two Cyframe decks present and both players I'm not particularly fond of. The one Cyframe player in particular, and this is where I'm gonna go into a little bit tangent in that things I like and didn't like. Things I liked about the tournament was that, of course, it was ran very well. The head judge was Cody, which Winnipeg players know is one of their best guys, if not their best player. and. Pretty, he's no nonsense to this kind of stuff. So it ran very well. All the judges were great. They were actually short on judges, and they were glad to have a couple guys come in later in the day and go on as judges. So shout outs to Cameron, shout outs to Nikolai, shout outs to Alex, as they were all a big help in making sure the event ran smoothly, despite in, fight, in spite of the fact that it was a really large player base. So, and oh yeah, shout outs to Mark as well. Yeah, I think that's everyone who... I don't remember if Terrence actually judged later on the day. I know I saw him there. So, those are all, like, the people I remember over there doing running the tournament. So, also, shout-outs to Galaxy Games and Fusion Gaming. But, yeah, that stuff I liked about that. Uh, I didn't like that the tournament ran for so long, but that's because of the one Cyframe player who was present. This cancerous tumor is the best way to describe him. This guy came to the tournament... With the specific intention of going into time and drawing every single round. His goal was to be the most gigantic troll possible. As he wanted to troll the judges by going into time. He wanted to troll his opponents by giving them bad tiebreakers. And he even wanted to troll himself by doing better than he did. And as a result, there were so many X01s and X11s. One person had like two like this guy was x04 going into the fifth round because of this bullshit i'm thinking you scumbag like you are literally the worst person in this room like fuck off and he like i overheard him talking to his friends about this he was gloating about this he was happy he was he got what he wanted he was pleased that he was being a gigantic faggot and thinking what oh like uh, looking at my side, I think I might have been able to get something going. Like, I think if I was able to summon Drago and Twin Twisters, the Overload, then I might have won. But I'm still glad I didn't have to play against that bullshit. But unfortunately, one of my friends had to in the one of It was a different side playing player, but that deck is still obnoxious as fuck to play. So, that little tangent aside, it was a good regionals. I got to see the sights of Winnipeg one, once again. Winnipeg has things that we don't have. They have Taco Bell. We don't have that in Saskatchewan. I also got to see Olive Garden. We don't have that in Saskatchewan. So, yeah, that's that's overall the tournament itself and the day the event itself. It was a blast. I'd go again if I could. I might go again in November. Uh, just depends on how the weather is because I generally am not fond of road trips in the winter time. So I probably, if the weather holds up, I'll come. If the weather doesn't, I will come. It'll be post in off too, so my options to play will be interesting. I'm leaning towards ABCs or Dark Lords. Everyone believes that I'm probably gonna play Dark Lords because that deck plays like Hopeless Dragon if it were as good. So I probably would consider, although ABC seems like the best choice. And if post in off comes out, then I might consider Froggy Stoma just to be that one guy because fuck it. 
but anyway that's all for now as for what you can expect in the future well now that this tournament everything's been wrapped up i can go back to um i guess putting on like i have some vanguard content i want to do so i'll be do that there will probably be some Yu-Gi-Oh! Dev Pro videos where I play with some of the decks I want to play with, i.e. ABCs, Dark Lords, Mermails, uh, this list in particular. And, um, yeah, I think that'll be it. Like, I've also got some, like, I'm also working on some games at the moment, like, uh, Trails of Cold Steel 2 just came out, so there goes a good portion of my free time as I beat the first one last week it took me 100 hours to beat that thing and i played it as often as i could so i've got that phoenix right spirit of justice dragon vfd seventh quarter i believe it's called and kirby's um uh, the new kirby game so i've got quite a bit on my backlog plate i also finished am2r last week amazing game so anyway that's all for now. That's what you can be expecting in the future. So until the next time, this is Blue Star D9, jacking out.